lab-grown proteins. Three lies and one big liar. We all want to have good food that is produced sustainably. There are lots of simple ways to achieve that, but the latest idea big business is cooking up is a real recipe for disaster. They call it lab meat, cellular meat, or in vitro meat, but we prefer to call it lab-grown proteins. That's because it's not meat, fish, or seafood, but an ultra-processed, unproven product. This lab-produced food is due to land on our plates in the next decade. It's being peddled as a magic solution. But, spoiler alert, that's not the case. You might hear that lab proteins will solve the climate crisis because they can replace industrial meat production. But in fact, laboratories that make lab proteins need a lot of energy to duplicate cells. Although methane emissions would decrease, carbon emissions, which stay in the atmosphere around 10 times longer, would increase significantly. The companies producing lab meat also claim that it will deliver healthier and safer food with lower levels of cholesterol, fewer antibiotics and fewer animal diseases. But nobody really knows how this new, ultra-processed product might impact humans' health or potentially lead to new diseases. We are also told that it will help us meet the increased global food demand. But that isn't where the problem lies. Nobody can claim that hunger and malnutrition are caused by us not producing enough food. The problem is how people can access food and who controls the whole food chain. So who is pulling the strings? Well, behind all these lies, you'll find a big liar. A collection of agro-industrial giants that will stop at nothing to make more money. The biggest players in the lab protein industry are actually the same agro giants that control the global meat market. You know, the one that causes so much pollution. With various business partners, they are investing in this new technology to strengthen their grip on the food chain with a focus on profits, not on the environment. But to tackle the issues of food, we can't allow production to remain in the hands of the same few companies. There is strength in diversity, and we need people and jobs in rural areas working for the benefit of society, not shareholders. So how do we do that? We ask the EU to implement the precautionary principle and ban this new product. We ask for new agricultural policies to ensure fair prices for farmers and a real transition to agroecology. We reject industrial livestock farming and ensure animals are reared in a respectful way. Together, we can refuse to let this ultra-processed food sneak onto our plates. Instead, we can choose food sovereignty and agricultural systems that provide healthy food for all. <laughs>